Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and today we are going to go through and do the recap of what happened at the fights on ARC's June meet. Now this is of course at the end of my three week long run uh, into fights, so there was uh, the 13 kilo stuff first, then there was Melbourne stuff, and now there is this stuff. And also, of course, in between, I did the Will It Bot episode that you saw last week. So, kind of going into this one, I did want to try and revamp some of my robots, but I just I didn't have the time to then revamp those and also do the Will It Bot at the same time. So, things just kind of got thrown together, uh, or thrown back together and put into the arena. So, I went in with Microdot, which was my triple-pointed... Uh, wedge robot and then slightly rubber which is my TPU printed uh, wedge robot as well. So nothing too exciting on the weapon front but as I said I was kind of running out of time and just had to get some robots into the arena. So let's see how all of that went. I got really unlucky for my first fight. I was up against Shrapnel as the opener. Now I know that Microdot can handle Shrapnel because that entire front uh, wedge is completely empty there's absolutely nothing in underneath it, just some counterweight to keep it from uh, moving up off the ground when I charge forwards. So anything that Shrapnel can do to that, it doesn't really matter. If he blows that to pieces, it doesn't make any difference. So that was basically the whole aim for this fight, was to keep the front pointed at Shrapnel while he had his weapon going, and then just jam him into the wall. And you can see I was doing that quite well. Here I got a good couple of uh, slams on him, got him into the wall a couple of times, he wasn't doing too much damage to me. He then did a bit of damage there and unfortunately knocked a wheel off, which, oh, lost the silicon off a wheel, and then I went down the pit. So that, on the whole, wasn't the, uh, the best way that fight could have gone. So the second fight up was a 2v2 fight. Uh, and I'm not with Jaden this month because Jaden unfortunately wasn't here. Um, and at the very start of this fight, I realized that my sticks were backwards. Uh, I must have. I accidentally jammed the motors in the wrong way round when I was rebuilding this thing in a hurry uh, the day before the event and yeah it meant that this fight was a lot harder for me to drive than it possibly should have been um, yeah also I think I did kind of make a mistake with the placement of my robots I probably should have put Microdot in 2v2 and then put slightly rubber in the uh, the A-League because Slightly Rubber would have been able to handle those hits from Shrapnel a hell of a lot better than uh, Microdot just did. I mean, there was a big hole blown out of the side of Microdot in the last fight, which had to be completely repaired with hot glue. If you've, uh, on my Instagram, you've already seen that photo, uh, but yeah, if not, then uh, yeah, you should go and have a look at that. Anyway, you can see here, I quickly got flipped upside down, and one of the big problems with um, Slightly Rubber here is that the wheel guards prevent it from self-writing, which means that there's not really much I can do. I just have to kind of be an upside down wedge with no real attack capabilities. I was trying to uh, flip myself back over on this wedge over here. It used to actually have a weapon on it, but in its first fight, it, um, yeah, it lost the weapon and they had to do a lot of repair work to get that happening. I then managed to get flipped over, but then go down the pit pretty quickly after that. So then it was time for some more 2v2s, and I had gone through and swapped those motors back over, but in my haste of doing that, I accidentally broke one of the wires on one of my motors, which meant that for this entire fight, I only have one drive motor. Um, but because the wheelbase on this thing is quite short, I can actually still kind of sort of move outside my radius, just because that wheelbase is quite short, and I think the TPU is a little grippy on the front, um, which gives me just enough capability to move outside my own radius. I mean, I am totally useless in this fight, um, but, you know, at least I got in there, because that was the thing, I, I put the robot into the arena, realised this was happening, and we would have had to postpone the fight and a whole bunch of other stuff, so that would have been a bad thing. Then, of course, once my, uh, my teammate goes down the pit over there, it's basically up to me, and all I've got is the spin, and it's really not going to do anything. I mean, my opponent here is a full-wheel drive pusher, so they should be able to get the upper hand on me. But, of course, it is a little bit hard for them to do that while I'm spinning around, but then they stop me spinning here. And as you can see, one of my silicon wheels is pushing back against four of his drive motors. So I'm pretty happy with that. Those silicon wheels have really done the job. They are surprisingly heavy, as we found out last week. 
but they uh, they do work quite well, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, and then this fight, I mean, I, I guess you can see where this is going. I'm circling closer and closer to the pit. I don't have all that much maneuverability here, and then I kind of get a little high-sided on my dead wheel, and yeah, you, you can see where we're going with this fight. It's... Uh, it's a it's a pretty foregone conclusion, or at least I thought so as well. I was just going to hang on as much as I possibly could, see what I could do about um, tipping him a little bit and trying to get the wedge underneath him. But as you can see, he's pushing me closer and closer to the pit, and my one good wheel is, uh, yeah, going to turn me around into the pit if he ever lets go. And, yeah... That's what happens. I, as soon as he lets go, I turn straight into the pit, and it's all over. Okay, and then the third 2v2 fight for the day. Now this one, I knew things were going to go a little bit better, because I tested the robot right before the fight, and everything was working properly. I was able to go forwards in a straight line uh, by pushing the stick up on my controller. So that was a big improvement over the past two fights. Um, yeah, so that was pretty good. Now. Here we're fighting a saw and a grabber. Now I'm actually way more worried about the grabber than I am worried about the saw. The saw doesn't bother me too much because the um, yeah the TPU is just going to kind of bounce off that saw a little bit, and he's not going to be able to get enough purchase on the wedge to actually do any real damage to me. So I, I kind of wanted to go a little bit more gung ho at the saw. My two v two partner was kind of all over him, so um, yeah I was left to kind of push the wedge around, or push the flip around a little bit and try and get under him, but like I said, I, I don't really like the, the flipper. That's Tron Legacy, I think, and it is a very similar design to Tron, both of which are kind of flipper-grabber combos, and they are quite competitive in our league, actually. They control fights that they're in pretty well, usually, and you can see here why. He's got me completely... And if one of the pits was open, I would have been down that pit uh, without an issue there at all. So they're, uh, they're quite a challenging bot to get underneath because they have very low wedges and then those huge gripping and flipping arms, which uh, help out quite a lot. Now, here, both pits opened at the same time and the saw was basically sitting on the edge there. So we just kind of nudged him in. And then I am now in trouble because I am in the claws of the gripper bot, bot with the pits open. But thankfully, he had to let me go uh, before he could get me close to them. And then, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a, a back and forth. We're kind of trying to rely on um, the fact that he can only grab one of us at a time here to try and get him down the pit. That was almost the, uh, the suicide play there where I was trying to get him to push me down the pit and then my uh, teammate would push him as I went down, but none of that happened and then he did end up down the pit himself. So that was a much better 2v2 fight. Okay, so finally back into some 1v1 fights and this time we've got another fight with Microdot against uh, Slipstream. So this is obviously just a wedge fight, just a bit of a pushing match. Uh, and yeah, that means it's going to uh, either go the distance or one of us is going to have to end up in the pit. As you can see here, I'm kind of wobbling around all over the place and I'm getting a lot of air when I am charging forwards. That's because shrapnel knocked the counterweights out from underneath the wedge in that very first fight, which didn't help at all because I need those counterweights in there to keep that nose on the ground. So I was struggling with that a little bit. Here, but I was uh, still able to get in underneath uh, him and do, uh, well, at least control some of the fight a little bit. Thankfully, there was still enough counterweight there to flip myself back over as you just, uh, just saw there. That is one of the big things I need to work on with my bots, is making sure that self-riding is possible uh, even when they take a bit of damage, because some of the designs I have uh, just don't self write very well once they've taken that first little bit of damage. Uh, yeah, so... Anyway, this first kind of few minutes of the fight here is all a bit of just kind of pushing and shoving, waiting for those pits to drop. And now that the pits have dropped, uh, we can actually, you know, we have a bit of a goal. And having the second pit drop in rapid succession is good for this fight. It means that this fight is probably going to end a little bit faster, which will be nice, as it is just a pushing match. And I almost had him! I almost had him there, but he, uh, he did manage to get away, which... You know, it does happen, and good driving in that case, in his part. Thankfully, I do manage to get him down the pit and win that fight. And again, back to 2v2s. 
Uh, so we go from having two pushy robots in the arena to having four pushy robots in the arena. Because uh, of course we're now versing Dynamo and Brick, which is the Lego <laughs> combat robot, which is really cool. However, uh, Brick's wedge is of course just a single strand of Lego, which means unless he gets in underneath you at an angle, uh, he typically doesn't get uh, underneath a wedge, because it's not actually even a wedge, it's just a Lego block. Um, which, like I said, it's kind of funny, but he does need to sharpen that wedge up uh, quite a bit. Also, as you can see, I have some I seem to have sorted out those gremlins that I was having uh, in the other fights, and I'm driving pretty well right now. And then Dynamo goes down the pit, which is, of course, really good for us, because Dynamo is... Uh, the better of the, these two robots. It's very well driven and yeah, we do end up winning this one. And I basically didn't do a whole lot there, but hey, a win is a win. And here we go, yet another 2v2 fight. It's been a very heavy 2v2 day today. Uh, and this time around, we're back up against Dynamo. And unfortunately, by this stage in the fight, I am already uh, stuck. So I'm just coming back into the screen now and you can see I only have one wheel working again. So I just, <laughs> these robots really did get hampered by the fact that I kind of threw them back together very, very quickly. Uh, this one, I believe, was uh, the connector came off rather than the actual solder joint breaking. It was the connector came off because of course I had to disconnect everything properly so that I could re-solder it and then I did not re-wrap my connections in duct tape to hold them all in place, which meant that Getting thrown into this fight, uh, in a decent sized hit, I ended up out. Uh, well, not quite out because I was still moving, but now it's me with one wheel versus dynamo, which, yeah, we, uh, you know, we can avoid the inevitable here for as long as we like, but I think we all know where this is going to go. Uh, so, we might even just speed up this last little bit and uh, show you how it all goes here. And here we go. This is the last of my 1v1 round robin fights. And it's up against Rhino, which is actually supposed to be a, a spring flipper, but just like me, uh, it is, or it has taken a lot of damage from shrapnel over the course of this event, uh, which meant that it isn't actually a spring flipper anymore. And that is actually kind of good for me because the whole robot was designed to be slow and steady and just get in underneath people and get, get that really strong flip on them. But with the weapon working, it is just a relatively slow robot. So uh, yeah, I was doing pretty well. And then in one of those tussles just there, I've lost another motor. So this is, I think, three or four of these now for this weekend. And unfortunately, this was the critical fight. This fight here determined whether or not I made it into the finals. And yeah, I, I'm now down a wheel in a very critical fight. Uh, so this is this is not going very well for me and yeah somewhere around here I am realizing that I'm not actually even really turning outside my radius and yeah I think I actually get counted out in this one pretty soon here because I am uh, I'm really not moving very far I did I did try and say I was but you can see right here I am really stuck on that one wheel and yeah, then I got counted out, which meant that my shot at the finals was completely gone. I'd like I said, I pulled this apart, this robot apart after this fight, and it was just a single connection that didn't get du duct taped, that should have been duct taped, uh, that disconnected. Yeah, I mean, I think <laughs> going forwards, I might end up having to just hard solder everything. I do like having the connections there, but they uh, they've caused me issues in this month's meets. Okay, so there you go. As you saw, that did not go very well. Now, <laughs> that was basically because the electronics that are in both of these guys have kind of been pulled out and put back in about five or six times. They are quite old uh, sets of electronics, so the motor failures you saw were mostly actually connection between the motor and the board. So in kind of the first case, 
Uh, one of the motors here has been used so often that it kind of wiggled back and forth enough that the wire snapped inside and just broke away completely. Uh, now I normally run hot glue around the end of the motor to stop that from happening and give the wires a little bit more strength and security when they're uh, sitting inside the robot. However, the wiring on these motors are, is actually so old that that hot glue had weakened over time and the wire was again free to kind of move around and break off as it did, uh, which happened partway through a flight and it just, uh, it's not good when that type of stuff happens. Um, and then of course the other thing is that inside these guys I use the little like Arduino Dupont connectors to connect the motors to the H-bridge just so that when I'm wiring everything together really quickly I can quickly and easily swap a motor polarity around uh, to get the whole thing driving forwards when I throw the stick forwards on my controllers. There are other ways of doing that and I could just um, sit it down as I'm soldering everything up and run the sticks when I'm soldering things up but I like to have the connectors here so that I can change it on the fly as need be. Now uh, once I have everything connected correctly I then tape those connections up to make sure that everything holds securely but once again uh, these are old connections and the ones inside here the tape just kind of lost a bit of its stick and kind of came unwrapped and disconnected itself and the same in this guy here. Um, he also had, was a bit bashed up for the day because of course went up against shrapnel first up which was never a good idea. Uh, ended up being like mostly hot glue down along the wedge and stuff and I had to re-hot glue in all of my counterweights uh, down the front here which uh, stop it from tipping all the way up and over but um, yeah, after that first flight with shrapnel, it wasn't ever quite the same and I was getting a bit of raising as I was uh, accelerating towards my opponents. Uh, yeah, so on the whole, not great, um, but I mean, this guy's did actually work. So for the day, I wasn't, I wasn't too unhappy. Uh, between now and the next flight, I've got about six weeks, so I've got a lot of time to rebuild and revamp and redo everything. Uh, in fact, these guys are probably not even going to get a look in. We're going to be building a couple of brand new robots here on the channel uh, for the next fight. However, um, it's been a lot of fighting happening on this channel recently. So next week, we're going to do something that's not quite as uh, robot heavy. I'm just going to take a break for a week and then we'll get right back into building and tweaking and designing robots as we normally do. So anyway, I hope you guys have enjoyed that one and I will see you next week for something just a little bit different.